you know, we've had a long history of having an audio tour in the museum and it's available for free and so a lot of people do pick it up. Um, we have uh, currently audio wands um, that you pick up and, and use in the museum. This summer we're going to be replacing those with uh, an iPod Touch solution with an, with an app. Um, and at first we thought, well, we can you know, reduce the numbers of devices that we hang at, hand out because people are showing up with smartphones, so why do, why do we need to hand out so many audio tours? So the um, education department spent a lot of time talking to people in the line who had smartphones and asking them why they were um, picking up the audio tour rather than using their own phone. Um, and a lot of people, you know, people who are traveling from Europe, where they might have had questions about thinking that they were going to get charged for roaming or not wanting to use up their battery life. And, you know, there's a lot of very practical reasons why people would ra rather pick up a different device than use their own phone. So what we realize is, you know, it, we're not BYOD yet, you know, we are partly, but that's not the only solution. And so um, we are looking to continue to hand out devices, but actually to hand out a device um, similar to what you would have at home and have an app that is the same app, but slightly different for the version that we um, hand out in the museum versus the one you download to your own device. So the one in the museum will be launched, as, as I said, will be launching this summer, and um, we're developing that in-house with some outside programming support. And our department is learning agile development along the way, which has been really great um, and a very good lesson for us. Um, and so what we'll have is we'll have the app in the museum, and we're going to spend some time really understanding how people are using it before we roll out the version for your own device. Um, and that one will ultimately replace the app that we currently have available in the store, both for iPhone and Android. And um, you know, we will continue to support and do m more with mobile web, um, but I think it's also about perhaps um, you know, looking, do we do responsive design for the website so it's adaptable to any, any device? Um, but I think this tour experience is a particular kind of experience. Um, at the same time, we're offering a lot of other resources that are currently available in the app, like access to our collection, information about the artists, um, some types of activities as well. But thinking about it really as a mobile particular experience. So i um, very excited to you know, get it ready for launch and see what happens. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that we're really looking at um, with this project and with a lot of projects we're working on right now is that kind of connection between experiences, whether you're in the museum or outside of the museum or, you know, online, on site, whatever. Um, and also across devices because, you know, if I think about the way that I spend my day, I pick up my phone and then a little later I'll look at something on a tablet and then I'll, you know, pick up my my laptop and, and I may even be looking at the same thing across all different devices and so you know thinking about that as a museum is a really interesting problem and challenge um, and also thinking about it across spaces you know whether you're someone in another country or you're somebody planning a visit or you're somebody at the museum you know how does that translate across all of those so I think that's kind of where we're looking um, to add sort of functionality as both with the launch and sort of moving forward and how do you how do you connect those experiences in a meaningful way but i think that you know the agile development side of things has been a really good experience um, because what's been what's kind of great is that as you're working on this project you actually have a, something working that you can look at every step of the way um, it just keeps getting added to and added to and added to it and you know the, the actual launch is sort of essentially just a, a line in the sand that we say, okay, suddenly now we're going public with this, but that doesn't mean that that process stops. You know, you keep sort of adding and growing it and changing it and things like that. And, I, and, and the approach that we're taking of, you know, developing it internally, but with programming support, I think will enable us to not just have this thing that's kind of locked in a, in a shell um, but something that we can continue to adapt as we learn more about how people are using it. Mm -hmm. so.